Hey, it's Gail from Bernina of Naperville and welcome to month seven of our block of the month. The Elizabeth Hartman North Stars quilt is coming alive and we don't have many more blocks to go. So this month, as you can see, is this beautiful lady. Her name is Meredith and you know what? Look at that fair hair. I would kill to have some fair hair like that. I try to do it and you know, flat as usual here. But anyway, you're going to learn a lot more about muskox during this class than you ever thought you would. For instance, did you know that both male and female muskox have horns? Yeah, you can put that one down in your memoirs. But in the meantime, we have a lot of talking about labeling, Hasker triangles, flying geese, and some other stuff. So let's get started. All right, well, here we are. Take a good close look at Meredith Muxox. M Mux, Mux, uh, Musk Ox. I can't even say it. Here is Meredith with her cute little fair hair. So, Meredith Musk Ox is made up of 10 different fabrics, including the background and some small scraps of black and white. You're going to need your rotary cutter and mat, all the rulers, how many times do we say that, a small six and a half inch square, medium 12 and a half inch square, large 21 inch square, because we're already in month seven, so it is time to start thinking about squaring up the rest of our blocks to make sure that they're all the same size. So if you don't have a 21 inch square, now's the time to get one. And don't forget Bernina of Naperville, we have you covered. We carry these little guys. So give us a call, come in the store, you know the drill. Uh, I use the quick quarter quilters rule marking helping device ruler thing so that we can mark our diagonal lines to make our Flying geese units and our half square triangles. We're going to need thread. And this month I made Meredith at home. And at home I use a Bernina 790 with a 97D quarter inch foot. So here are the fabrics that we use for Meredith Muskox. The background fabric is a light green sherbet kind of like a lime sherbet color, I would say. It's 18 inches with the fabric, so basically a half a yard of material. The dark detail is a scrap and the white detail is a scrap. And then you have seven fat eighths. And don't forget a fat eighth is nine inches by 21 inches. You know, we're here to sew, we're here to make a cool block, but I think the reason why you really turn, tuned in this month is to really find out what a musk ox is. A muskox, according to the Alaska Wildlife Federation, is a stocky, long-haired animal with a slight shoulder hump and a very short tail. Both sexes have these horns, and it looks like it's fancy wooden hair that's kind of parted in the middle, but the horns of the bulls are larger and heavier than those of the cows. But look at this little guy to the right here. I mean, the long hair, the short little legs, it doesn't get any cuter than that. So Meredith, you know the drill by now. You label, label, and you label some more. And this, e this month is pretty easy. Pretty easy except for dun, da, da, dun, da, 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 Meredith's face. So why the long face, Meredith? <laughs> well, it's just a way for me to remember to tell you how you're going to assemble Meredith. So Meredith, when you sew this together, you want to make sure that you assemble all of the eye units, the nose units, and then piece K together because I kind of didn't really read the instructions this month as I was going along and I I was like, what am I doing wrong? And really, what was I doing wrong? I wasn't reading the instructions. So just make sure that you sew the eye unit to the nose unit to piece K, and then you're golden for the rest of the construction on this block. So this is the question I ask myself a lot. Is a muskox a yak? Is a yak a muskox? What's going on here? Well, first of all, they are different. And there are 
I heard a lot of differences, but really when I was reading and doing my desktop research, I really discovered that a muskox, are na they're native to Canada and Greenland, maybe some in Siberia, Russia, and Norway, but yaks are found in China, Tibet, and India. But look at that quaff on that yak. Okay, so they've got like a much broader horn span. They've got like a little fluffier, blonder hair. The yak has the, you know, cool, fair horns, whatever. But the real thing that I was reading that I'm, I'm really quite perplexed by is that yaks really prefer a colder climate rather than a warmer climate because it gets their like musk oils out of whack or whatever because of their sweat glands. But how can there possibly be a colder climate that a yak would prefer if Canada and Greenland are your preferred climate as a muskox? I mean, these are still so many unanswered questions. And once again, like I said, we're in month seven now, and it's time for us to start thinking about how this quilt's going to go together at the end. You know, like who can sit next to who? It's, it, this is like planning your wedding. How many of you have had like a huge wedding and you can't have Aunt Jill sitting next to Uncle Tim because, you know, back in 1967, there was an issue. Well, when we put together our quilt, it's a good idea to keep Meredith the muskox as far away as you can from Patty the polar bear on your final quilt assembly because polar bears are one of the muskox's predators. So keep this in mind because it would be a real faux pas to put Patty next to Meredith. Just saying. Now, let's, let's talk about something serious. A quarter inch seam check. When was the last time you did a check to make sure that you are actually sewing a quarter inch seam? Do you know if your needle is properly centered? Have you oiled your machine in a while? So, you know, we don't, we haven't done this yet. We haven't made a shameless plug, but did you know that Bernina of Naperville is offering $10 off a of service cleaning through September 30th? So all you need to do is bring us your machine and we will give it a tune up and you'll get $10 off because we have three more blocks if you include Meredith to make, and it might be time for you to get your machine in sparring order because it's not over when our blocks are done. We're going to want to assemble the blocks, and you might even want to come in and give our Q series a spin to quilt your quilt. I am just putting it out there. All right, our muskox fact. Muskox secrete a strong smell from glands under their eyes to attract the opposite sex. <laughs> I know that you think this is pretty gross, but have you ever squirted some musk cologne for a night out on the town? It's the same difference. Musk is a class of aromatic substances commonly used as base notes in perfumery. They include glandular secretions from animals such as musk deer, numerous plants emitting similar fragrances and artificial substances with similar odors. Modern use of natural musk pods occurs in traditional Chinese medicine. So, you know, you're spraying a little Meredith on you to have a good night out. Seriously, though, it is time to check your quarter inch seam. So you want to cut four strips of material, one and a half by six inches. You're going to sew what you think is one and a half inches, press, and this should measure four and a half by six inches when complete. If you don't believe me, let's go to the videotape. This demo isn't just about using our Bernina quarter of an inch foot. It's also about reiterating the importance. If you're going to be doing precise piecing, you have to make sure that you start off with everything precise, and that means cutting. So before I start any major project, I do a seam gauge. For those of you that knit and do a knit gauge where you have to knit a certain amount of stitches over a four inch square, that's what I think of doing when I'm starting to play with new quarter inch feet or a new machine or, or whatever. So um, 
I've cut one and a half inch strips, and when I sew these four one and a half inch strips, they should equal four and a half inches. So that's what I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna sew them together in pairs. And another thing about making things nice and even is when you line your material up, they need to be lined up perfectly. We, we don't wanna see the bottom fabric poking up and we don't wanna see the top thread overlapping. We want them to be at exactly flush with each other. Then we're gonna lift our presser foot and lower it down onto our fabric. And see these little notches that are in the foot? These are in all of the Berdina quarter inch feet. And this notch is a quarter inch behind the needle. This notch is right at the needle. And this notch is a quarter of an inch before the needle. We're not gonna pay attention too much to any other notch than this one today, but those other notches are there for you for more advanced piece work. Oop, see, gotta get back on the road, everybody. There's also marking here on my slide on play, my slide on table. And if you really want it to be a real fuss budget, you would also try to keep this lined up here with that line. notice how I'm guiding it through. I'm not even, I'm not pulling, I'm not shoving. I am just nicely just steering the material through the machine. Remember what I said about that notch right at the needle? That's the one we're going to use. Making sure you line up your materials. And then finally, I'm going to sew my two units that I just made together. So there's the, two, the first two pieces and the next two pieces. Now you might be wanting to guess what I'm making here and I'm making a rail fence block. Remember, I'm lining that up with that first notch on my foot. Now that I've finished sewing my seams, I'll meet you over at the iron. So we have our piece that we stitched together. And now the best thing that I like to do is to set my seams. I do have to warn you, I'm working with a Laura Star iron and these irons are all about the steam. And if I'm really using these irons to their full potential, I don't need to do this step, but I'm doing this because I imagine not all of you have a Laura Star. So what I'm doing here is I'm pressing the seams the exact way that they come off of the machine. Okay, now I'm going to clear my pipes. That gets the condensation out. And now I'm going to just let the iron do its work in folding these pieces over.
and I can even use the lines on my iron here to straighten out my piece. It's important, very, very important, that when you press, you don't have any gaps in your seam allowances there. You want them to be nice and flat and press to the side for durability. Now, I did get that a little bit wiggly, so I'm gonna just press that and get it back into position. Now, the next thing is you wanna measure. I'm at my little mini cutting mat here by my ironing board, and I'm just checking to make sure that my piece measures exactly four and a half inches, which it does, and that makes me super happy. See, I was right. Well, Gail, tell me more about muskox. Okay, muskox herds are often led by the females. Ain't that the truth? And muskox eat mostly grasses, woody plants, lichen, and moss. Mating season? Tell me that you like it, yeah. Is August through October. It's right now. These muskox, they are hot to trot. And male muskox, this is no stretch of the imagination, are not exactly monogamous. A female muskox carries her young for about eight months. Their young learn to stand right away so they can outrun Patty the polar bear. Bunching. Yeah. All right. I know. You're ready for next month already, and that's cool. Because we are going to be creating two foxes, Fritz and Fred Fox. It's almost like Bert and Ernie without the stripy sweaters. All right, well, I guess you've made a muskox. Hey, maybe you wanna make two because it is mating season. Yes, that's right. September is the end of muskox mating season. So we thought it was only appropriate that we would do this block in September. <laughs> anyway, hey, we've only got two more blocks to go and next month it's two. Two for the price of one foxes. So join me next time and Happy sewing. Oh yeah. And if you want to see more videos just like this one, don't forget to tune in to the Bernina of Naperville YouTube channel. It's easy. It's youtube.com slash Bernina of Naperville. You can also like, we like to be liked, comment. Ooh, we love to hear what you have to say and subscribe. And if you just cannot wait for the next video, don't forget to click the little, uh, bell and you'll get an alert every time we upload a new video just like this one. But in the meantime, thank you and happy sewing.